Hey everybody, Chaz Mulder here coming to you for our virtual town hall number 12. It is hard to believe that uh, today marks the 12th virtual town hall that we have done now that started back in uh, late March as we got through the, the COVID pandemic and sort of forced us to, to um, recalibrate a little bit and refocus how we were going to get message out to the community. Uh, as you know, these virtual town halls, we've really wanted to show the continuity of government. We've wanted to provide information and we've also uh, wanted to be transparent so you know what's going on even when you might not be able to to be going throughout your normal uh, life but in uh, even though we are sort of um, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel on COVID and the stay-at-home orders and and that sort of thing we feel like it's important that we still continue um, to, to provide information to the community and that's what we're doing today with virtual town hall number 12 and I'm really excited uh, because today we have an opportunity to uh, talk to and meet one of the newest uh, county employees, Zach Fox, the director of the Murray County Public Library. Zach, thanks so much for joining us today. Chaz, thanks so much for having me today. Uh, this is exciting. I've been following along with the virtual town halls, so it's been an awesome, awesome service that you've been offering the community, keeping them updated and doing it in a format that's, uh, you know, online and, you know, makes everyone feel safe, kind of like the fireside chat of the new era. Well, your words, not mine, brother, but I appreciate <laughs> that. I'll take that as a compliment. Uh, Zach, given that you are uh, one of the newest employees in local government, you started in December of 2019, if I remember correctly. Uh, correct. For those who may be sitting at home and, and not knowing who Zach Fox is, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, man. Uh, so I'm originally from Miami, Florida. I came to Tennessee when I started college, went to Tennessee Tech, received my undergraduate degree there, met my wife. Uh, we spent a few years in Memphis while we were working on our graduate degrees. I worked at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center in their library. And, uh, you know, I was not one of these kids that grew up saying, I'm going to be a librarian when I grow up. That was a basketball player, then football player, and then, you know, a few other things in between. And uh, I fell in love with working in a biomedical library. And, uh, you know, upon receiving my degree in information science and my master's, uh, one of my mentors in Memphis said, hey, if you want to go to the best library, you go to Vanderbilt. And uh, so I worked at Vanderbilt's Eskin Biomedical Library and uh, rose to the level of associate director of the library and of the knowledge management center there. Uh, and then when the opportunity presented itself to uh, apply for the job here in Murray County, I said, you know, it, it is so important to me to lend both your passion and your professional expertise close to home. And Murray County has been my home for 10 years and Columbia for just a little over a year now. So uh, I, I did not hesitate. I jumped and said, hey, I'm, I'm all in on Murray County and then on Columbia too. So uh, I, I've been enjoying it thus far and uh, we're, we're looking to make a big, big change here at the library. Well, that's awesome. One of the things that, that I like the most about you and you pointed it out is some of that world-class experience you have uh, in, a, in a library and in an institution uh, of the likes of Vanderbilt and some, uh, so what I think that positions uh, Murray County Library for is for you to bring some of that expertise here on the local level uh, with the public library system and, and just your vision and your passion, Zach, is something I think is really inspiring all of us. And we talked for a minute before you got on, really a, a vibrant library is a key to a vibrant city. And I know you share that passion. So talk to us, what are some ideas or some things that you're thinking about innovative or not, that, that you think uh, can come to the Murray County Public Library here in downtown Columbia? Oh, I think it really begins with uh, kind of taking a step back and, you know, setting your goals and setting your mission for a library. And when I came to the library, we really didn't have a completely uh, future-proof mission. And we definitely did not have a vision that was going to last. So our mission and vision now is to really serve as Murray County's cultural epicenter and provide equitable access to information, literature, technology, art, and culture. And I think if a library can hit on all of those things, it is poised to do great things in a community. Uh, so currently, uh, we are really, really working hard on ensuring that we're bringing ourselves up to speed on uh, technology and what we are offering the community. Recently, we have applied for a $20,000 uh, CARES grant from the IMLS and the Tennessee State Library and Archives that would enable us to put a, a uh, state-of-the-art 
uh, teleconferencing center in both the Columbia Library and the Mount Pleasant Library. So, uh, you know, we kind of hinted at some of the ways that the library is changing as a result of COVID. And I think being able to offer something like, you know, the ability to walk in a library, set up a Zoom call or a, a WebEx call, just like we're doing today, is imperative uh, for, you know, our patrons who are going to be working from home maybe for the next, you know, six months or a year or even in the, you know, indefinite future. Well, and you made a good point, by the way, uh, Murray County Public Library is a system that includes uh, the main campus in downtown Columbia on, I believe it's 822 West 8th Street. Is that correct? Um, uh, 211. West 211. Street. Okay. 822, <laughs> 211. Maybe we, maybe we can cut that part out. Um, but in any event, uh, 211 West 8th Street. And uh, then there's also the facility in Mount Pleasant, which is also under your direction. And so really, this is a, a system-wide operation that uh, benefits a lot of uh, of Murray County, and certainly uh, we're pleased to have the the main campus in, in the heart of downtown Columbia. You talk about some of the technological advances and opportunities that the library has. I believe the the local library also has Wi-Fi hotspots available for checkout. So for folks who don't have internet, there's also some opportunities provided there. Is that correct? Absolutely, yes. And we're constantly adding more hotspots because there's always a waiting list for our patrons. Uh, to get a hotspot, check that out, take it home, and have some good, you know, high-speed internet connection, uh, no matter where they live. Um, we offer those both here and in Mount Pleasant, so uh, our Mount Pleasant folks are not, you know, uh, lagging behind on our technological offerings. Yeah, it seems like, uh, you know, one of the things that COVID uh, brought to the forefront was the fact that we take for granted that, that many in our community do not have access to high-speed internet or to internet at all, for that matter. And so, again, you talk about that sort of cultural hub, uh, you know, for education and arts and all of the things that the library definitely uh, can be and, frankly, should be that in, in the city of Columbia. So I'm really excited about your vision there. And, you know, I've always seen our library is sort of a, a, a giant uh, ready to be awoken because um, if you think about it, uh, you know, we're in Murray County with a population of 100,000 people. We are a regional sort of hub for Southern Middle Tennessee. Um, the city of Columbia, it's located in the heart of downtown. So there's just a really cool uh, position for our library to, to make some, some huge strides in the next several months and, and years ahead. And I think your leadership is, is certainly already starting to show there. Talk about the, the COVID um, impact. I know that uh, like many of our businesses in town, the library was also impacted. Uh, I was really pleased to see the, the innovative solutions that y'all were coming up with. You were still offering curbside checkout and much mm -hmm. like the curbside pickups for, for restaurants and retail stores. Talk about the impact that it's had and, and really how y'all managed through that as we near sort of that end of the, uh, the yeah. tunnel on that. Sure. So, you know, no matter how well you think your organization is prepared for things like fires, floods, you know, killer bees, I don't think anybody had a perfect plan for what to do for a global pandemic on this scale. Uh, you know, we started in late February instituting some social distancing measures, uh, you know, kind of restricting some of the areas that our patrons could go to things like that. Uh, and that led up to closing our doors to the public on March 16th. Um, you know, when uh, Mayor Ogles, yourself, and uh, Superintendent Marzak were uh, delivering your, your address to the county and to the city, uh, the library was working hard on instituting procedures that we would start the very next day. And while the majority of the libraries in the state and in the nation uh, shut down, uh, we pivoted really hard and really changed up our operations completely. So we instituted curbside pickup, which has been extremely popular during the shutdown and continues to be popular today. Patrons can call the library, use our catalog, uh, and they can pick out the books, DVDs, even video games that they want pulled for them. We set them out in the foyer for contactless pickup at a time that they arrange with the librarians here. Um, you know, we also pivoted hard into online programming uh, that's proved to be extremely popular as well. Our daily story time that we have for the kids, uh, you know, we've been doing that for the duration of the shutdown. And also we had a chance to get really creative in what we do and uh, what we put online. So we've put together videos for, you know, adult crafting, DIY videos about outdoor activities that people can get outside and do and online science experiments, things like that. 
Uh, these videos have been viewed over 45,000 times online, shared by education groups, local government, statewide governmental offices like the Tennessee Department of Children's Services. Uh, so they've, they've really caught fire here during the, the shutdown and uh, they continue to be widely disseminated and used. So we've been really excited that we've been able to make that type of impact during you know, a time that others have you know, thought, well, you know, maybe we toned down our services. Now we said we're, we're all in. So uh, we've been that, happy to continue to keep moving. That's awesome, Zach. A lot of that I didn't even realize. And, you know, one of the things we've talked about is, is on these virtual town halls that we've spoken with businesses and, and other uh, entities, it seems like those businesses who were willing to be innovative and creative and, you know, not take it uh, you know, with the glass half empty, but instead look a little bit more positively on the situation have been the ones that were best positioned to move forward more quickly mm -hmm. post uh, pandemic. And it sounds like the library uh, was, was right up that alley as well. And now if folks want to learn more about some of the programs that you've mentioned, obviously they can go to the social media platforms, which I've also been really impressed with over the last several weeks and months. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems like the library has stepped up its game on social media for sure. But your website is murraycountylibrary.org, and that's where Correct. they can find out about some of those projects you're talking yes. about. Yep. Uh, we continue to update our website. That was another area that we kind of lagged behind in. You know, uh, currency of content is huge for me. And we had a website that was a little bit out of date when I came on board. We've been doing our best to make sure that our website is continuously up to date. We are putting in things like resource guides. So uh, if people are looking for information, about you know things like the COVID epidemic, or if they're even looking for information on local government, how to register to vote, how to get your you know car tags, you know where to go for X, Y, or Z, we're getting information like that put up online because that's the role of a library is to facilitate everything that you need done in a community, and uh, we really see that as our charge is to make sure that our citizens are informed and able to be the best that they can be on a daily basis. Talk about briefly, Zach, for those who might not have come into the library in the last several months or, or even years, uh, I know there have been some infrastructure upgrades and improvements, some of which the eye may not even notice, such as <laughs> roofing, uh, but some of which the, 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 uh, just the layperson would notice. But what, are, what, are you, what is that person going to see when they come in their library for the first time in a long time? Uh, beyond a fresh coat of paint and, you know, most places, they're going to see brand new lighting. Uh, we are constantly updating, uh, you know, things like our shelving. Uh, we are working on getting some new furniture in the library. Uh, as most people know, the library was closed from that, you know, mid-October point through November uh, to get the roof redone. So we've been using that really as an opportunity to improve things like our flooring, the lighting. Uh, we have brand new murals in our children's library and in the stairwell leading down to the children's library, uh, just trying to make the space a lot more inviting, uh, more visually interesting. We're putting in new art displays. We're constantly rotating our book displays, things like that, so that, you know, your eye is caught and when you walk in the door and you're immediately engaged, whether it's learning about, you know, the Juneteenth holiday, which we have on display right now. Uh, or you know anything else that comes up during the next few months. That's awesome. And you know, one of my favorite things about our library, uh, among many, uh, is its location. And, and truly in, in the heart of downtown Columbia, uh, in that downtown district. But as of a couple of years ago, it also uh, became situated right at the entry point into the Columbia Arts District when the mm -hmm. city of Columbia uh, created and established an arts district here locally that we continue to work on very regularly to try to improve and enhance that district. Um, with the library being, as you said, sort of that cultural hub of all things, whether it be technology or you know just education or arts, um, have you put any thought to maybe how the library can become a little bit more invested in that arts initiative that the city is promoting? Oh, most definitely. Uh, you know, we are so happy to be where we are because we, like you just hinted at, we are at the epicenter of both the arts district the downtown economic district, and also in the historic district. And there's a quote that always sticks with me that bad libraries build collections, good libraries build services, but great libraries build communities. And part of building a community is embracing, you know, the artistic talent and 
uh, that you have in your community right here. And we've been trying to do so, uh, you know, trying to partner with some of our really good local artists, uh, making sure that installations make their way through the library, at least, uh, you know, for a short period of time, reaching out to schools, um, right before the pandemic, we had the Kolioka Unit Art School, or <laughs> Unit School, their art class, uh, donated some art and put that on display for us. And we uh, transitioned that to an online gallery because of the epidemic. But, uh, okay. you know, we look forward to doing more things like that in the future, because that's what we're here for, to give everyone a voice and a platform. That is, that's awesome. And I'm excited. I'm already thinking of some things that we need to get uh, you and those conversations uh, coupled with the conversations of our, our arts council and, and really uh, even a broader community. I'll go off script again for one more question because it's just it's occurred to me as we've been talking. If you think about the city of Columbia and Murray County, you think about uh, the James Day Polk home, you think about Columbia State Community College, and you think about, of course, the Murray County public school system. Seems to me, Zach, that those are three uh, entities that in, in some way, shape or form uh, should be having conversations and collaborative type of discussions, maybe even strategic sessions on how those four entities could play a part. And perhaps to your point, uh, the library building good communities could even be a leader in that conversation. Oh, for sure. Uh, you know, before all of, you know, our shutdown, we were playing host to the uh, Polk Lectures series that was right. going on the fourth Tuesday of every month. Uh, so we were we were ahead on that front. Uh, we have partnered with Columbia State Community College, uh, going through their uh, their reconnect program, getting folks who maybe have started a degree back in the school, getting them uh, you know the technological tools, the books, the supplies they need to be able to go back to school, and then also partnering with our you know our county schools. Uh, you know, summer reading is huge for us and trying to prevent that summer slide where students leave school, they forget everything that they learned, all of their reading comprehension goes down the drain because it's all, you know, outdoor sports, Netflix and other things, but making sure that they're focused on, you know, maintaining what they've learned for the next year. And I think the library can play a huge part in that. Absolutely. And, and with, with your leadership and vision, and then, uh, you know, we've got uh, some new folks over at the Polk Home as well, who have really been thinking outside the box and doing some really unique things. And of course, you know, we know now that we have uh, a newly um, hired director of schools at the school system. And then of course, Columbia State, the first community college in the state of Tennessee is always re ready and willing to have conversations. So to me, it just seems like there's a huge opportunity again, that sort of sleeping giant that, that could be awakened and, and, and uh, make some really great strides in the city of Columbia and for all of Murray County and for all of Southern Middle Tennessee region. As we sort of round third and, and head home, Zach, talk about, I know the library is heavy on summer initiatives. You just touched on that summer slide that we're all trying to avoid as parents, you know, <laughs> instead of spending time on devices, getting them in, in books. My daughter who's going into fifth grade at Whitthorn next year was telling me about the two book options that she has over the summer required reading and so we were having mm -hmm. some conversations there but regarding the library specifically what what are y'all doing this summer and and how is that impacted uh by the the, the state of covid and and are you going to still find ways to continue to reach out yeah so uh we are still continuing our summer reading initiative typically this would be done you know in-house uh, however the state library has actually purchased a online system for all of us to use called read squared uh, and so now you can keep up with your summer reading at mcpl.read.squared.com. Uh, it's awesome online platform. We'll still be doing those really cool giveaways and raffles at the end of the summer, uh, encouraging folks, you know, of all age groups to continue to read over the summer. Uh, we work with the school system to make sure that we have all of those required summer reading books here in the library. We're making an effort to purchase those. So if you do feel more comfortable reading on your Kindle, your Nook, uh, even on your iPhone, uh, making sure that we get those in our Libby app. Uh, we're also having all of our summer reading performers that we usually have uh, in an online format, whether on Facebook, on Zoom, on WebEx. Uh, and so we're posting the full schedule for those on our Facebook, on our website. Uh, and of course, we are also continuing to do summer feeding. Uh, so we know that one in four Tennesseans goes hungry during the summer. Uh, and that's so unfortunate. 
you know, school lunches play such an important role during the year. Uh, we want to make sure the kids are fed during the summer. So uh, here at the Columbia Library, you can come in, you can pick up both a breakfast and a lunch uh, completely for free uh, for a school age child. And you can take that home and make sure the kids, you know, don't go hungry because you can't learn if you have an empty stomach. I saw that on your Instagram page yesterday. Is that through the public school system? Y'all are essentially a satellite location or how, how is that working? Okay. Yes, we're, we're picking up from Riverside, uh, you know, because we do have such a central locality. Uh, right. It's easy for us to distribute and be here. We're in walking distance of pretty much everything. So uh, it, it's nice to be able to serve in that capacity. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I saw that yesterday. I was really excited about that. Zach, I'll, I'll have to ask you one question that may or may not have been a suggested question from someone who may or may not be a friend. But <laughs> what if what if somebody discovers uh, a book in their house and they see <laughs> on, the, on the side a sticker that says property of Murray County Public Library and that uh, unnamed friend has no idea how long they've had it, but they know for sure it's overdue. What would your suggestion be, the good library director that you are? <laughs> bring, bring it in. Uh, bring it in. Uh, no apology, no explanation needed. Uh, we will waive fines. Uh, I'm not huge on collecting fines. Uh, it's too punitive and it shouldn't be something that keeps people away from everything that we have to offer in the library. Uh, that should never be a barrier to service because that's what we're here for. We are a public service and you know, for a $5 fine to penalize somebody, I, I just don't get that. I don't want to hamper anyone's education or, you know, making themselves a better, more rounded person just because they forgot a book. So bring it in. We'll wave it. We're just glad to see you in the library. Well, you heard it directly from the director himself. If you have an overdue book, bring it in. And I'm glad you said that. I mean, because on a serious note, there are people out there that may be scared to walk in the door of the library. Maybe it's because they've never been in a library before. Maybe it's because they don't feel like they're very literate or know how to read that well. But maybe it's also because uh, of the fact they have overdue library books and they're scared that if they try to check out a book, they're going to get penalized. And so what I, what I hear you saying is, is that all of those barriers that exist with regard to public libraries or libraries in general, uh, the Murray County Public Library is trying to take down those barriers to make sure it's accessible to all. Absolutely. And then if, if somebody wanted to give to the library a uh, donation or even books, is uh, is there a preferred method uh, to, 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 to be a contributor of the Murray County Library? You know, there is. Uh, you know, we get a lot of book donations. Uh, we are fortunate in that we have a fair amount of money to build our collection. So while we appreciate your book donations, sometimes they make it over to our uh, students club for their book sale, which also helps raise money for our summer reading programs and for other things that we want to do in the library. I think one of the most pressing issues for our library now and the growing community that we have is uh, increased capacity and space. Um, so as most folks know, we've purchased the building behind the library with an eye towards in the future, expanding the building that we have. So um, if folks believe in the future of the library, which I hope they do, and I hope they see the proof of concept that we're undergoing right now, uh, that they can make a donation towards our future expansion through our building fund. For those who don't know, uh, you heard Zach Fox, the director of Murray County Public Library, uh, just mentioned that the library actually purchased a building um, behind the library that sort of broadened its footprint uh, on that on that downtown Columbia campus located at 211 West 8th Street, not 822 <laughs> West 8th Street. Um, any any uh, insight or sneak peek you can give us as to what your specific vision on, on that is, Zach? Oh man, um, it, it's a grandiose vision. I, I think we could probably do another town hall in of itself just for that. But uh, the vision is, you know, within the next five years, have a larger library. Uh, we, we are constantly butting up against space requirements for our children's library and for the library up here. Uh, we need a larger footprint to serve the growth that the county and the city is seeing. So uh, we hope that we can make that dream a reality in the next few years. I love it. Well, I, I will say this, uh, who knows what the future will hold, but uh, you can see why those who have tuned in today, uh, why I'm so bullish uh, and excited about the future of the Murray County Library. It's because of the leadership uh, that we have uh, talking about building inroads in the community, being a community hub and a, a cultural hub uh, for education and arts and technology. And so Zach, 
Um, I just want to say thank you for your vision and your leadership and uh, know that everybody at the city of Columbia is rooting really hard for the Murray County Public Library's uh, continued success and anything that we can do in the city, uh, please don't hesitate to call on us. Will do. We appreciate that. All right, everybody. Well, you've heard from Zach Fox, the newly minted director of the Murray County Public Library with the main location located at 211 West 8th Street, uh, satellite location also in downtown Mount Pleasant. Uh, if you haven't been to the library in a while, you've heard a lot of reasons today why you should. Uh, visit their website, murraycountylibrary.org, or visit their many uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and other social media platforms to learn more. For Zach Fox, I'm Chaz Mulder with the latest virtual town hall. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye, everybody.